want, if you could compel Kevin and Julie to do anything for your character, what would it be? We'll start with Michael. Good question. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll start with Steve. Yeah. Start with Steve. That's not a good idea. I don't know. Really? Come on. Alright, I would say I would like uh, I would like Jimmy to become more involved with fighting. Some sort of uh, you know, have a little more edge to him, kind of fight back a little more. Part of Jeremy's journey is growing up from a troubled kid, a troubled little boy, a little like, you know, fold over on himself emo kid to, to <laughs> becoming a man, you know? And, Losing, losing the love of your life once and then maybe twice and, and trying to figure out where you fit in the world and who you're supposed to be, no matter what happens to you, no matter what you turn into or don't turn into. That's part of the journey, yeah. Really simple, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Matt? Uh, well, I would uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, 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 I would, I, I would compel Kevin and Julie allow Alaric and uh, Aunt Jenna to have a filthy, filthy <laughs> sex <laughs> really enjoyed so much <laughs> the in, the indul indulging in the in the blood and, and I really I don't want Stefan to be I guess I don't want Stefan to be as um, confused and I want him to make decisions to indulge in blood and to take part in some sort of maniacal malicious activity once in a while just to fulfill that vampire need. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, well, I know that when after we did the pilot, we talked and I said, I asked you what, who you thought Stefan was, and you had this idea that he was a loner and stuck in a closet. Right. <laughs> did you say, wait, did you say Stefan's in the closet? <laughs> Marcos, thanks for ruining the big twist. <laughs> Actually, I had the, 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 come, this just occurred to me. I would love to do a flashback of Stefan, and I'm not even like kidding, like in the 1980s or something, like dancing to like, um, like some really bad 80s music. Um, with Lexi? With, with, with Lexi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just having fun. Yeah. yeah. Nina? Um, right. <laughs> it was fun, though. We've discussed that. It could be cool. I want to know. Nina, we'll wait for you. Um, I would like to see Elena take on Catherine. Like there would be a fight. <laughs> no, Elena's gone a long way. I think what Paul was trying to say about his character is just that... I'm trying to <laughs> Show is that they've got a lot of depth and they have a large, long journey and they have hardship and they change. And Elena started off as a troubled girl who lost her family and didn't know what was going on, and now she's evolved. What's going on? You said large and long. The yeah. boys at the light of the table started chuckling like you just in my you know, what's, you know what's ironic about this entire thing is that there's literally a sign. Please be aware that many members of your audience may be under 18 years Under 18 years old. Under 18 years old. Under 18 years old. Under 18 years old. Well, yes. <laughs> Alright, Ian, you? Um, I was going to go with what 
Paul said uh, about you know having flashbacks when you see these really cool side to them, what sort of have gotten them the evolution of them getting to where they are? You know, with seeing Damon, you know, front front and center at a Rolling Stones concert, '69 or something. But really, I think that with a mullet, with a mullet. <laughs> but I really think that uh, that Damon should. I would get compel Julian Kevin to give Damon stuff his bedroom because there's a lot of action that goes on. <laughs> Such a fast. It's, it's a dope. It's a dope. All right, and last one, Michael. You know, uh, one, I would want Tyler to uh, script-wise be there for maybe at least a page and a half rather than a page. Aww. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm thinking the band's out here. And then uh, no, you know, with these flashbacks, you know, Tyler's always getting in fights. I think it'd be funny to have some awkward. Lockwood ancestors getting in fights back in 1864. Mess around with the Salvatores and kick their ass a bit, so that'd be kind of fun. Kevin, did you notice a running sort of theme in all your answers about what we they would like to see? It's flashbacks. Well, no, but we're doing it a lot. Yeah, we are doing it. One of the things we're treating in this season is the idea that there's another part of the story, you guys, that we haven't shown you. And, you know, it's, we start in 1864 and some of our flashbacks, and we show you the other side of the story and what went down and some of Catherine's story and what her participation was back then, and it's going to be, I think that's so sort of chapter two, but it's also sort of the other side. Are we going to see any of um, what Catherine's been up to in the last 145 years? Well, that's sort of the mystery. It's like, where has she been? What has she been up to? Why has she come home? You know, she had a hot dog, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what, we only have about 15 minutes left, so let's open it up to uh, some audience questions. Great. I think we have some out there. Hi. Hi. Um, hey. So, my question is specifically for the writers, but the actors as well. Where do you guys draw your lines? Because there's such fun complexity in your characters, and that's obviously a theme. Where do you draw the line in making someone too good or too bad? Like, what's the criteria or the, the, the time, I guess the frame of mind behind it? We, we like to think that people who are coming in and wreaking havoc and doing lots and lots of bad things are doing it with their own purpose and their own belief in what they're doing. And so coloring somebody evil and good, it doesn't really apply because when you're up to your worst, your intentions might be coming from what you perceive to be a good place. Damon, everything Damon did was led by love and and then, you know, being naughty now and then. So we don't let, we like to think that darker a character goes, the more we'll get a window into where they have light, and the opposite is true of that as well. Next. Well, <laughs> Nina, between the characters of the Salvatore brothers, which one do you think is more attractive and why? <laughs> and why? Um, Stefan is, is, is oh. um, Stefan is very attractive because he is protective of Elena and he loves her unconditionally and he will do anything for her and he's committed. And then Damon is very attractive because he just wants to sleep with him. <laughs> 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 because he's fun and spontaneous and you never know what he's going to do and that's always very exciting too. So they're both very attractive in different ways. So and basically, Stefan has bigger fangs. Yeah. All our jeans are real fangs. You know what they say, but. Oh, no. All right, next. They say fangs, plural, not oh. fangs. <laughs> what? <laughs> Take two. Go ahead, ask a question. You want some two CEOs? Tina, based on the Salvador Brothers, which one of is least like their character and why? Uh, um, they're both exactly like their character. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul's a lot funnier in person. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's just, he has a sense of humor that you guys get to see now, but his character is just more, everything's, everything's going wrong and he's always trying to fix something, so he doesn't really have a chance. It's a worry bug. Yeah, you have a worry bug. 
but you're like a down to earth, fun, chill guy, so. Thanks, man. <laughs>